we have a graph of f prime. So important to realize when you're looking at a graph. Are you looking at a function? Are you looking at its derivative? Are you looking at its second derivative? In this case, we're looking at f prime. The figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of a twice differentiable function f on the closed interval from 0 to 8. The graph of f prime has horizontal tangent lines at x equals 1, x equals 3, and x equals 5. The areas of the regions between the graph of f prime and the x-axis are labeled in the figure. The function f is defined for all real numbers and satisfies f of 8 equals 4. So f of 8 equals 4, there's an initial condition. We know when x is 8, the y value is 4 for the function f. A. Find all values of x on the open interval from 0 to 8 for which the function f has a local minimum. Justify your answer. For A, we're looking for a local minimum of f. Now, whenever you're looking at a graph, you really have to note, what am I looking at? They give you a graph of the derivative of f. So if I'm looking for a local minimum of f, right, I want to see when the derivative equals 0 or the derivative is undefined. So if you look at your graph, um, the, these are all critical points, of course, right? Where the derivative is 0 and the derivative is undefined. I have critical points of f at x equals 1, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, at x equals 4, and x equals 6. Those are my candidates for a local minimum because those are my three critical points. Remember, a minimum happens when your slope or your derivative is negative, and then your slope of your function, also known as your derivative, is positive. Okay? So, if that's the case, then if I'm looking at a graph of my derivative, I want to be in negative land, right? And then in positive land. Here I'm in negative land, then positive land. So, look at these critical points where x is 1. Well, my derivative is in positive land before it and in positive land after. So that's not a min or a max. Let's look where x is 4. I'm in positive land and then in negative land. Hmm, that would give me a local maximum. When x is 6, my derivative before that is in negative land. My derivative after that is in positive land. Ooh, that is a local minimum. So f has a local min at x equals 6. Now you have to say why, um, and you can be short and concise but clear, since f prime changes from negative to positive at x equals 6. That is sufficient. B. Determine the absolute minimum value, that's the y value, of f on the closed interval from 0 to 8. Justify your answer. So for B, I'm looking for an absolute min. Remember, absolutes can happen at critical points or at endpoints. So I have my endpoints, 0 and 8. I had my critical point at 1 and at 4, but those weren't even relative min, so I don't have to worry about those. But 6 is a candidate. So I need to find the values, the y values of f of x for when x is 0, when x is 6, and when x is 8. So let's go back to the stem. They gave me a value of 4, okay, when x is 8. So let's see, how am I going to find the f of x when x is 6? Huh, let's see. Well, they gave me the area under the rate function. If you remember, the area under a rate function gives me my change in my function. So to find f of 6, I'm going to start with the 4, because that's what they gave me, and see how that changed from 8 to 6. 
this is kind of tricky. Does this make sense? Fundamental theorem of calculus. My starting value plus the integral from that x value. When x was 8, my y was 4. If you want, you can write it like this. f of 8 plus from 8 to 6. And f of 8 was 4. All right, so I have to figure out the area under my curve from 8 to 6. Well, I'm going backwards, and so the area under my curve from 6 to 8 is 7. So since I'm going from 8 to 6, that's going to be negative 7. So that should give me a negative 3. Mm, that was kind of tricky. So let's do that again for f of 0. So it's going to be f of 8 plus from 8 to 0 of f prime of x. Remember, if this going backwards bothers you, another option is you could just rewrite it from 0 to 8 and then negate it. Remember, you can always do that. But since we have a picture, I'm just going to say, OK, so this is my 4. Uh, let's see, at 6, I was already at negative 3. Um, I'm, so I have a negative 3. And then I'm adding 3 because I'm doing the opposite. So that's 0. I'm subtracting 6. So that's negative 6. And I'm subtracting 2. So that gives me a negative 8. Again, that was a little tricky. So the question is, what is the absolute min? When they ask it like that, they are asking for the value. So the absolute min of f of x is negative 8. The absolute minimum value is negative 8. C. On what open intervals contained in from 0 to 8 is the graph of f both concave down and increasing? Explain your reasoning. C is asking us about the graph of f. So be very careful. The graph they gave us is not f. It's f prime. It's the derivative. So they're asking us when is the graph of f concave down and increasing? Well, let's start with the increasing. f will be increasing when its derivative is positive. That means the derivative is in positive land, which is from 0 to 1. Uh, 1. OK, so from 0 to 4, f prime is in positive land. And from 6 to 8, f prime is positive. Okay, so 4 to 6 is out. That's now, let's see, when is f concave down? f is concave down when the second derivative is negative. Well, that means the slope of f prime is negative. So I want to look, this is f prime, so I want to see when its slope is negative. Well, slope is negative right here. Slope is negative right here. Ah. Well, it's also negative all the way down here, but this whole part is out from my first condition. OK, so here I am. From 0 to 1. And from 3 to 4. OK? So here we go. F is concave down and increasing on the interval 0 to 1 and on 3 to 4 cents. F prime is positive and f double prime is negative. 
d. The function g is defined by g of x equals f of x quantity cubed. If f of 3 equals negative 5 halves, find the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals 3. d, we're looking for the slope of the line tangent to the graph of g, and they give define g for us, at x equals 3. All right, well, if I'm looking for a slope, that means I'm going to take the derivative. So let's take the derivative of this. Uh, here we go, 3 times f of x squared times chain rule f prime of x. Not too bad. Let's substitute in the 3. They were good enough to tell us what f of 3 is. So that's negative 5 halves. f prime of 3, well, we have the graph of f prime. So let's just look and see. On the graph, they tell us when x is 3, y is 4. The y in this case is f prime. And there's your answer. Seventy-five is your answer.